Okay, so this is going to be our notes on uh, the organization of living things, really talking about two things, uh, the domain, the domains, the three domains, and then we're going to look at the six kingdoms. Uh, the main idea to always remember whenever you're thinking about uh, organization of living things is it's not really that different than how we organize things in our everyday life. So if we were to look at, uh, like if I put a little box here, and we looked at all the students, or all of the CRSD, let me just type in here, so Copper River School District, so just put CRSD, okay, so Copper River School District, and then we could look at the Copper River School District and realize that we have uh, staff, Right. like teachers and aides, and then we have students, right. not very neat writing though, and then we have parents, volunteers, so we could take this one item that's made up of many things and divide it up into other groups, and then even the staff we could put uh, the classified staff, the unclassified administrator, so we could we could divide this up into many many different groups, and a lot of times that's very helpful. In science, it's also very helpful. So if we look at uh, the same idea, and we'll say green, okay. So we put this here, and then we start off with the same idea, but here we put all living things. So if we had this one box, contains all living things. And then, uh, and then go from that idea that all living things can then be broken down into smaller categories. And uh, the first of those categories are the domains. So if I just go like this, like this, like this. And then I list these three domains over here. Archaea, Eukarya, Bacteria. So if we take all living things, they're either archaea, eukarya, or bacteria. So if we put those groups in, uh, we'll go yellow for one, right? and then we'll go blue for another, and then we'll go orange for the last one, like that. And then this could be archaea, right? So if we type that in there, there's Archaea, then in here we put uh, Bacteria, and then in here we put Eukarya. And so what we've done, we've taken these, this big complex group made up of many things and divided up into smaller categories. And that's really what we're doing here with uh, living things and categorizing and just looking at them uh, in a more organized way. So let me get rid of some of these here. Okay. So if we look at these three domains, we have Archaea. This is kind of a new one. Uh, it wasn't always thought of as a even a kingdom. But as they've understood uh, molecules and DNA and what's in the DNA of all living things, they've seen that this is perhaps a little bit different. Now I share a little video on the, I think it was last Thursday or Friday, if you haven't watched that, watch it. it talks about the archaea and how they're different than these other bacteria, because really these groups are very similar. They're single-celled, they're prokaryotic cells. Uh, but they're just a little bit different. The thing that makes archaea a little bit different is that they're extreme organisms. So they really live in places that are hostile. So we wouldn't think living things would live in these places that they live in. It's really hot. So let's add some of these hostile. So temperature is really high or very low, very cold. Okay. Maybe salinity is great. Pressure is another one. If 
for the last one I'll add. And pressure. Let's put press. Okay. And there's other things like places where there's no light. Uh, lots of different circumstances. But these organisms can live there where they usually don't see life. And uh, they're just really unique. And they're very similar to bacteria, except something with their cell wall that differentiates them from bacteria, and they've kind of given them a, a separate domain. The one where we usually, you know, kind of know is eukaryota. And these are organisms that have the complex organelles and also are multicellular. For the most part, there's a few that are not, but multi. Celled. Okay, and these also have these membrane bound organelles. Now, these other archaea and bacteria, they have organelles, but not the membrane bound ones. Because these guys, like bacteria, they have ribosomes, they have cytoplasm, they have a cell membrane, a cell wall, they have all those things. But they don't have things like mitochondria, let's call them might emit. They don't have a chloroplast or uh, Golgi, you know, some of these things that really are very complex. Okay, and that's what really separates this eukarya from archaea and bacteria, but also uh, these archaea are prokaryotic. So we're going to go pro. And you, these are eukarya, that's where really where the name uh, eukarya comes from. And they're just different size cells. Uh, they're just a little bit different. So uh, it just distinguishes each one of these domains. And then bacteria is like your typical bacteria that we would think that makes us sick, uh, that gives us a uh, cold or whatever, give us an infection. And also, though, these are very useful, like yogurt, uh, different types of things that we need in our daily life. Some of them live in our stomach, help us uh, complete functions that we need to do as living things. So a lot of times we think these bacteria is bad, but they're really not. And they can be like tooth decay, that's really bad for your teeth. And they can make, some of them make you sick, but for the overall uh, effect of these guys, it isn't all bad. So always keep that in mind. So that's your three domains, archaea, eukarya, and bacteria. I'm going to clear this. And we keep moving down here. So then we take, we have these three domains, and then we can break each one of those domains. Let's actually go back here. <coughs> yeah, it's a race. So if we take, I'm going to get rid of some of these guys here. So if we then look at these kingdoms, hopefully it's going to move down with me here. So I want to show you this. Okay. So if I move this down, yep, perfect. Okay. So then we look at kingdoms. We can then take each one of these archaea, bacteria, and eukarya and break them down into different kingdoms. Okay. These actually get their own kingdom. So archaea is archaebacteria, bacteria, eubacteria. That's really their kingdom. So their domain and kingdom is very similar. It doesn't really change. Eukaryota, though, goes into all these different domains, and we can kind of include all these into that. Okay, so protoctista or protista, plants, fungi, and animals. Those all go under here. So if we're going to put these guys here, we'll just give them a, a PR, that's protoctista. This is plants, PL. fungi and F and then animals so we can just keep breaking them down into smaller groups so what started as one big group is now three domains and then four kingdoms that fit under eukarya okay and we kind of know what these guys are this we've discussed these already but protista are these single-celled organisms like protozoans and protists <coughs> uh, some are animal like these are the animals give them a different name but they're still they're all protoctista these are animal like and then these are plant like 
They can be very complex, but these guys can also be single-celled, but they still have the eukaryotic cell with um, complex organelles in it. We won't worry about these guys so much. Even plants, very unique that they do photosynthesis. They're very vital to they supply all the energy, you know, the energy that we get. And then fungi are important uh, for symbiosis. They work together with a lot of other organisms, and they also are recyclers. So things die, and they recycle all the nutrients and things that make up that living thing back into the environment. So they're really helpful. And we're not going to cover any of these. The ones we are going to cover, though, are animals. Okay. So then if we look at the animals, we can then break them up into some groups as well. And really, if we're going to do this, we would say two main groups of animals. We would say inverts, animals without backbones. And this is the majority of animals are these. We could list nine of these guys. And you're going to watch a video. We're not going to list it this time, but it could be nine. So you can see there's a lot of them. And then vertebrates, I'm not going to list these either, but for these it could be birds, it can be mammals, I'm just going to put a letter. And these inverts can be sponges, nematodes, crustaceans, and you know, many, many different things. But you can see we start with all living things, we slowly break it down into more and more groups. <coughs> These have great variety. Uh, and you look at a sponge, they have birds, like they're very different, but they do have these basic characteristics that they all share. So, make sure you kind of understand where this is all going, that we have six kingdoms, Archaebacteria, Eubacteria, Protoctista, plants, fungi, and animals, and sometimes we even throw some into Chromista, into some of these as well. But we're not going to do that. They kind of fit in here with the Protista. Uh, but really, these are the six main kingdoms. And these six main kingdoms are made up of three domains. Archaea, Bacteria, and Eukarya. Let me know if you have any questions. Make sure to annotate these notes and then turn them in.